Hi, welcome back to another episode of the Christian Minute Podcast. My name is Anne Markey and I'm your host. And today we're going to talk about what it actually means to have a Christ-centered home. And I'm going to share with you why that's really important and then a few tips to help you get started. So if you've been around at all, you know that I like to just jump in right to the meat and I want to get to the bottom of this. Of what does it mean to have a Christ-centered home? And it just really means that you're making Jesus the center of all the things happening in your house or even in your life. Okay, so that means family life, decisions, relationships, all these different things. I'll give you some more examples later on in the episode, but all these different areas that you have that every single one of those things is centered around Christ. Now, that definition may still not make things clear for you, but I think as we go into why it's important and some other things that I want to cover, you'll start to kind of get a better idea of what this actually means. So, why is it really important to have a Christ-centered home? Well, the first thing is that it becomes less of a cultural thing and more of an actual personal relationship with Christ. I'm Canadian and I live in Canada and I think most of you live in North America. And the United States and Canada are actually known as Christian countries, but if you live in them, you, you know that that's not true in practice. So there's this great culture of Christianity where people go to church and they call themselves Christians and they just go about their daily lives, but that's where it stops. It doesn't go deeper than that. Now, I'm not saying that those people aren't Christians because that decision isn't up to me. That's up to God himself because he's the judge. But what I'm saying is that there's a big difference to just being a cultural Christian to being in a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And having that relationship, it means that it affects different areas of your life. The perfect example of this is marriage. And God actually compares himself to a groom and Christians as his bride. So we know that Christ wants a personal relationship with us. And it's not that friend that you see every six years or every, you know, three times a year and just catch up. He wants the everyday, day in, day out relationship that you would have like you do with your spouse. So that means that in a good marriage, you're not leaving things off the table. There are always things that you talk about and in a good marriage, I know for ourselves, we talk about everything, even the boring stuff. When I was young, I would listen to my parents talk and they would talk about work because that's what they did during the day. And they would share, you know, the ins and out of the office and the projects that they were working on. And I remember sitting there and just being so bored and thinking like, oh my gosh, these people have nothing else to talk about. But the older I get, and now I've been married for 16 years, I see that that's just sharing each other's lives. You're saying, hey, this is what's important to happen in my day. I want to tell you this. And then you're sharing those things with each other. You're building that relationship. You're growing together. You're having that connection time and you're becoming stronger. And that's the exact same thing with the Lord, that he wants us to have those everyday moments with him. He wants us to bring him in the things that we're doing and not just bring him in, but actually go and ask, hey, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to go here? Do you want me to go there? Do you want me to make this decision? And so we our decision making is not just centered about what we want and what we think, but about what the Lord wants and what he thinks. And when we start doing that, it actually touches a lot of different parts of our lives. It's no longer just one thing, but many. 
Now, another reason why this is critically important, it's because it's literally the difference between life and death. Now, I don't like being crazy dramatic and I'm not trying to over exaggerate anything and I don't believe in scaring people into heaven, but the reality is that your decision, whether or not you're gonna follow God or whether or not you're not, is the difference between eternal life and eternal death. But not just that, it also can impact your physical life. When we look at the Old Testament, the example that I give a lot is that you can go through all the cleansing laws and feel that it's really restrictive and say, oh my goodness, God has so many rules and it must be so hard to follow the rules. God doesn't want me to have any fun whatsoever. Um, and these are all the things that I have to follow. But the thing is, now that we look back and if you look at those cleansing rules, those rules were like, hey, after you touch something dead, wash your hands. You can't mix this thing with that thing. They didn't have advanced science. So some of the things that we take for granted now, like washing our hands before we go to the bathroom, washing our hands before we eat, washing our hands before we touch anything dirty, that wasn't a normal thing. And so God isn't trying to restrict his people. It's literally saying to them, if you do these things, you will live longer. The nations around them would spread sickness and have all these deaths and the nation, because they followed the word of God and they did these cleansing rituals, they were healthier and they lived longer lives. And so the things that sometimes we think could be restrictive could be because he knows that if we don't do those things, we may have a harder life. Things might not go as well. Now, that doesn't mean that Christians don't face hard things. I can share my testimony and say that I've been through many hard things. And so, you know, choosing to follow the Lord isn't, you know, like a gold ticket saying, hey, you can have no more troubles. I will never say that to you because that is an absolute lie. The scripture tells us that we will face trouble. The difference is that when we follow the Lord, things may be a little bit easier, right? Like if you wash your hands, you might not get sick as often. And we know this because we have just gone through, you know, two years of COVID where we were cleansing our hands and using you know, sanitary things. And then lo and behold, I don't know if this happened in your household, but it did happen in ours. As soon as those restrictions went down, we all got sick because we weren't taking as many precautions as we were before when it came to sharing germs. So that's one example that I use for people to say that it's not just necessarily about, you know, your eternity and where you're going to spend eternity, but also how you're going to live your life. And that when you do follow the things that the Bible says, there are some things that are going to be easier for you. Now, another important aspect of having a Christ-centered life is really that this is when you're going to grow spiritually. Because if you're just a cultural Christian and you're only going to church maybe a couple times a year, or you're not necessarily spending time in God's word, I'm not saying you're never gonna grow spiritually or you're not gonna learn more about God. Chances are you probably will, but just not as in depth or as quickly as you would if that those things became a regular part of your routine. And again, I'll go back to a, a relationship example when I met my husband, we were working in a call center. And when we started to get to know each other, you know, it started with us talking at the bus stop and then we sat together on the bus and then we started taking our breaks together and then we started sitting next to each other and then we started spending all our time together as we could outside of work. But in that time, I saw all his ups and downs, the good, the bad, the ugly, because it was literally every day, you know, eight to 10 hours a day. 
And so when we started dating, even though we had only known each other for a couple months, I felt that that timeline was accelerated because I saw him so often. And so I didn't have to wait a year to see how he would react in a stressful environment. We worked in a call center selling things, which at the time was not his forte, and he was stressed out all the time. And so I got to see the real him really early on in our relationship. And so I could make decisions as to, okay, this is the type of guy he is. Do I like that or not? Versus when my parents were courting, they, my dad was in France, my mom was in Chicago, and they sent each other letters. And so I'm not sure how long it took to get one letter you know, across an ocean, but it took a long time. And in that process, you don't get to know each other as well or as quickly because the communication is a little bit, you know, there's a barrier between that because it's letters, right? You can read something and you don't necessarily know their intention or their tone of voice. So you can have some inferences that maybe may not be correct and you don't necessarily get to know them as quickly because you you may be, you're not going to be able to write, oh, this is how I reacted in this particular situation. So it takes a lot longer. And it's the same with the Lord, that when you're having that daily in and out relationship with him, you're going to grow so much faster. You're going to get to know him so much better because it's in your everyday moments. It's not just once in a while. And so it really does help that connection to get deeper with the Lord and to do that even quick, like more quickly than you would if you were only doing something, you know, once in a while. But having a deep relationship with the Lord, not only does it help you grow spiritually, but it helps you in your other relationships because the scripture tells you how to act with other people, how to treat your spouse, how to treat others just today in our family devotions we read the verse that you know like treating others like the way you would want to be treated okay there are many scriptures in the bible that tells us how we should be treating others caring for them and loving them and all these sorts of things so if we're getting to know the lord and we're slowly becoming more and more like him it's going to impact different areas of our life and it's going to do it naturally it's not necessarily going to be super hard or even extremely intentional because sometimes it just spills over and it goes into these other areas including our relationships with others now when we get to know the lord and when we start reading scripture we see that scripture is full of you know values that then help us make decisions based on those values so a really easy example of this is that you know scripture tells us to take care of the poor so that then value can be ingrained in me and so then it means okay i'm i want to try and find some ways to donate to people who have less than i do because i know that the lord values that and since the lord values it i can also value it and it can then influence some of the decisions that i make in my life one of my favorite things that a relationship with Christ brings you and a deep relationship with the Lord brings me is that eternal peace and hope that when I look in the world, it scares me. There are a lot of things happening that I specifically do not think about because I refuse to live in fear. But when I do start getting fearful, the Lord reminds me of the hope that I have in him because ultimately, regardless of what happens on earth, he is the God and King of the universe. He controls all things. And when I'm saved, if the worst should happen and I die, I go to heaven with him. And that is a great comfort because it doesn't matter what's going on around me. 
he stays the same, his promises are true, and my eternal status is locked in. And so then I don't need to be consumed with the things of this world. I don't need to be worried about all the different things because ultimately, at the end of the day, those aren't going to matter. They'll affect maybe the day-to-day, but it's not going to change my future. It's not going to change my eternity. And so I can let those go and I can have this lasting peace because I have this hope in Christ. So not only does it help in the day-to-day, but also in calming my fears, giving me a hope, and also a purpose. Because sometimes, certainly as a mom, I felt like my purpose was just to keep humans alive. And for a long time, it didn't really seem quite worth it. I didn't have the best early mom years experiences. And so I needed to have a hope that was outside of those things. I needed to have a purpose that was outside of those things. And for both of those, that was Christ and the purpose that he had for me and the hope that then I have in him and how those things aren't related to anything that I do, anything that I am, but ultimately it comes back to Christ and who he is and the way he wants that relationship with me and his view of me, which is incredible. So that's just like a really quick overview of why I think having a Christ-centered life is critically important. I know that there's probably a bazillion other things we can talk about, but I want to shift focus a little bit. And maybe you're like me and you think, okay, you're talking about areas of my life, but you're not really sure what specific areas the Lord can really impact. And so I'll share you this story. When I was a young teenager, it was kind of like I had three different personas. I was Anna at church, Anna at home, and Anna at school. And I wasn't necessarily the same in all those particular areas of my life. And um, they didn't really have tons of overlap because the only people who would maybe see me in those three areas were my siblings and we weren't in the same grade and they weren't really keeping tabs on me. So it was really easy to kind of be different people in those different areas. And then when I was 15, I wanted to get baptized And I had this realization, and I do believe it was the Lord, and it was kind of like, hey, um, Anne, if you're telling all these people that you're following me, maybe you need to stick to one persona. And if you're declaring to everybody that you're my follower, that means that, you know, that impacts the person you are at home the person you're at church, and the person that you're at school. And so in that moment, I had to decide who I wanted to be. And thankfully, and I think it's only through God's grace, the Lord helped me choose. And it was the one, you know, and from church, the woman who loved the Lord, who loved to worship him, who loved learning about him, and who wanted to live her life for him. And so From that day forward, I mean, I'm sure there were specific moments when I wasn't exactly the same, but I'd like to think that I was then just the same person regardless of what scenario you met me in. Because I decided to share my life and to declare that life to those around me regardless of where I was. And so I wanted those things to be the same. But maybe you're like me and you really like lists. So I'm going to give you a few areas of your life that can be impacted by knowing the Lord. And I wrote them down. So this includes your personal relationships. Okay, That could be siblings, parents, husbands, work-related. It, the Bible has a lot to say about marriage and family, how to have a Christ-centered marriage, how to raise your children in Christ. The Bible talks about, you know, ethics and morality, talks about work, how to work. The Bible talks a lot about money, how to think about money, how to spend your money. Um, 
it talks about social justice and all of these things also lead to decision making and the bible also has a lot to say about the decisions that you make and so this list may feel overwhelming and that is not my point I don't want you to start thinking like, oh my goodness, Anne wants me to change all these single areas in my life and there's just too many of them and I can't do it because it's a huge expectation. And don't worry, I've totally been there because sometimes it does feel completely overwhelming <laughs> because it's like, oh my goodness, I already have this huge long list of things to do and I don't even have time to do all the things on my list. And so now you're telling me I need to then have all these considerations in all these areas. I'm never going to be able to do this. And that's a natural thought. And I just want to tell you that that's not what I'm saying. That there are ways to naturally have the Lord influence all these areas by just changing a few simple things. And so I want to just give you two tips to help you get started. And if these are the only two things that you ever do, I promise that by doing these two things, it will affect all the different areas that I've talked about. Okay. Now you won't be surprised because these are not brand new. And the first is to have personal time with the Lord reading the word of God and praying. Now, I've had this conversation a lot with my husband and when he hears this, he's like, it can't be that simple. Like, really? Like, people always say this. Why do they always say this? And my response is like, well, because it's true. When you start reading the word of God, you get to know God. You get to know who he is. It starts impacting the way you think the way you behave the things you want to do and so if you're spending time in the word of God and if you're doing it in a way that you want to learn more that you want to grow and that you want to obey then just spending that time with the Lord will have a huge impact on every single area of your life because like I said, the Bible talks about finance. It talks about relationships. It talks about all the different hard things, you know, even loss, even, you know, you look at David in the Psalms and, you know, he struggled with very deep depressions and being persecuted by his friends, <laughs> being stabbed in the back. Like there are some very very relatable stories in every single piece of the Bible that we can see ourselves in because it's real life. And every single one of those, you know, weaves in God and who he is and how those things are impacted. And so just by reading scripture, it will change the way we think. It will change the way we want to do things and it will make us holier just by being in the Lord's presence. And so when we do that, it will naturally just flow out of us. And so we don't need to say, okay, I need to be a better Christian at work by blah, 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 blah. And maybe your mind works like that and that's what you need to do. And if it does, go for it, okay? But that feels so overwhelming to me. So I like just having a few simple things I can do that then just naturally spills out, right? But if I'm reading scripture that says, hey, you need to be treating your coworkers the way you want to be treated, and I haven't been treating my coworkers nicely, I might have a double think like, ooh, okay, <laughs> I'm going to have that conviction. The Lord's going to speak to me and say, hey, Anne, I need you to be nicer to your coworker. And then it just naturally changes the way things happen at work because not because I've added it to my to-do list, but just because I've been spending time in his word and letting him speak to me and then letting it then be the motor that changes my behavior, that changes maybe my mindset, that changes my all the different things just by doing the one thing. Okay, so number one. Spending time in Bible study and prayer, and it doesn't have to be a bazillion hours a day. It can be super simple. 
And just having that regular time with the Lord will be completely life-changing and it will impact so many areas of your life. Okay, the second thing that I encourage you to be doing is to be connected to Christian community. So this means spending time regularly with other Christians so that you can encourage each other, pray for each other, support one another. And I'm not just saying go to church once a week because that is a way that you're going to be with other Christians. I mean like real friends that you share the struggles with them. You tell them what's going on in your life. You ask them for prayer and they pray over you. When you're going through something hard and you need some biblical wisdom, you have somebody you know you can go to for advice that can pray with you and give you wisdom. So this isn't just the casual relationships. This is lasting, deep relationships to have with other Christians. And so that might mean you need to be more engaged. But I promise you that when you start having other Christians in your life on a regular basis, it will make you a better Christian. Because you'll be encouraging one another in your walk with the Lord. You'll be leaning on each other when things are hard. You'll be supporting each other, loving each other, praying for one another. And all those things help you become closer to the Lord and just helps you become a better person, honestly. Because you get to see somebody else's relationship with the Lord and it sometimes could be a mirror and you look at yourself and like, oh, I'm not doing that well. I can really learn from this person. And then you want to, you know, start emulating some of those things. And so Christian community is the one of the best things that you can do because it kind of takes the pressure off because then it's not just up to you to do all these things. Because now you're doing it together, not just with the Lord, but kind of like a team. And maybe you're not a team mentality, and so you're not really on the whole Christian community group. But I promise you that even people who are antisocial, like sometimes I really don't want to be in a group, um, but even I have seen the value and the depth that you can get to when you are with other Christians. And you're not just doing the small talk, but you're doing the deep conversation type you're you're digging deep into scripture you're praying for one another you're sharing each other burdens that's what i'm talking about so if you're not doing that find a way that you can incorporate that somehow maybe that's small group maybe that's bible study maybe who knows but i promise you that there are ways for you to include christian community in your life that doesn't feel overwhelming and it will make a huge difference Okay, so what I went through was a lot of general things. And sometimes when I hear a general message, I kind of get disappointed because like, oh my goodness, you touched on something and I really wanted you to get deeper. And so I've got good news for you. Um, in the next couple of weeks, I will be doing these podcasts every week and we'll be focusing on having a Christ-centered home in tons of different areas. So just to get you a preview, these are some of the things that I'll be talking about, and I wrote them down so I won't forget. So, um, we're going to be talking about 30 powerful verses about building a Christian home, strategies for teaching and modeling Christian values to your children, seven simple ways to create a habit, a family prayer, um, seven age-appropriate ways to explain prayer to children, six simple strategies to encourage children to play pray you're gonna see a pattern here it's a lot about children how to pass down our faith to the next generation and i'm sure there's a billion different topics that i haven't listed there so if you're sitting there and there's a specific topic that you want to know more about related to having a christ-centered home and this could be your home your business your relationships whatever please let me know in the comments and then I will try and see if I can fit some sort of teaching related to that subject in the next couple of weeks. Because ultimately, these topics are just something that I think that um, I know a lot about so I can share. 
and that I think could be really valuable, but I also don't want to miss anything. And I also don't want to just assume that because I relate to it, everybody else will. So if there's something that you want to know more about or you have questions about or you want to hear more teaching about, please make sure to leave a comment in the comments below to say, hey, Anne, I'd love for you to do a teaching on blah, 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 and then I'll see what I can do, okay? I know that if you've been sitting there and you've been listening, you might feel a little bit convicted and you want to start making some changes and maybe that means going to get some resources. But before you spend any money, I just want you to wait a minute. I have a free Christ-centered home bundle being released July 10th. And this bundle is full of resources for Christian women to do exactly all the things that we've been talking about. Okay? So this bundle is, has 29 free products and all of them are to help Christian women establish a strong foundation in every aspect of their life and cultivate a home environment that honors the Lord. Okay. Now, even though this particular bundle is free, once you do opt in, you will get an opportunity to purchase a premium bundle that has even more resources that you can get to help you do all these things. And as I've been getting this bundle ready for you guys, there are just so many amazing resources that I know that you'll just absolutely love. Now that premium bundle will be a paid bundle. So if that sounds like something that you wanna get, make sure to get yourself on the wait list for this bundle because not only will you then be the first person to know when this bundle is released, but then I will also give you a special coupon code to get a discount on that premium bundle. So if that sounds interesting to you, go to www.onedeterminedlife.com forward slash bundle and sign up for the wait list. And then as soon as this bundle is available, I'll send you an email and I'll get you a discount code so you can get access to those resources July 10th, okay? And as I said, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be covering lots of different topics. Make sure to let me know the topics that you're interested to learn more about. If you know somebody who is looking to incorporate Christ in different areas of their life, then please invite them to join this group. Um, we're going to be going through so many different things and we're going to have this great, amazing resources for everybody that's going to be available. And I don't want you to miss out. So make sure that you stay tuned for that. You share that with your friends. Um, and if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll put all the links in the comments so you can get that information in your hands. So I'm really excited for the next couple of weeks. We're going to be sharing lots of different things. Um, make sure you stay tuned for this group. We're going to have some different stuff going on in this group as well. And tune in next week as I talk about the power of praying as a family. So thank you so much for joining me today. And I can't wait to see you in my next episode. Bye.